Votera is a really cool platform where you can do all these on-chain voting uh, within the Cardano ecosystem. So if you wanted to get the Cardano ecosystem to vote on something and use their wallet and their ADA balance in there, you can submit a poll onto the Votera website and then get the community to vote behind it. It's really cool. It's a really easy mechanism where they'll be signing a particular transaction, sending a little bit of ADA back to themselves and just paying for the transaction fee. And that allows them to record an on-chain vote in that process. Let's have a look at the website here. So this is, is so this is it, Vote Air. Uh, links down below for you in the show notes. You can get to them at learncardano.io. But here you can see all the, the platform in general, what it looks like, and it gives you a little bit of an overview of how it all works. Now they have all sorts of voting scenarios. So if you're running a DAO or you're doing some governance in your project, they will be able to cater for it. There's so many different scenarios that you can do. Now I'm just going to connect my wallet here and give you a quick overview of how it works. So I'm connecting my NAMI wallet. I'm just going to give it read access. There we go, successful. Now I can create a ballot here. I can do a simple ballot. It will cost me one ADA to do so. And I'll go next, I go test. And then I can put in a URL here for a particular website, a start date, end date, and a snapshot date. And that snapshot date is pretty important because that's the date that the platform will record how much ADA is in someone's wallet and record that and use that as voting power. So that, that's kind of important there as well. So something to take in, uh, take note of. Now you can go through here, you can uh, set your question, is pineapple on pizza okay? Put in a bit more of a description here and then give the users the various choices. And it's as easy as that. So let's go preview this. This is what the poll will look like. So test, 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 the link there, start, end date, snapshot, and then your options down below. Very slick and easy interface. We can click on finish, and then uh, the transaction will come up that you need to sign for. You can sign that and you're done. Now I have Vivek and Mike join me on this episode to talk all about the platform in exactly how it all works, the mechanisms, everything around it. We also look at future development for the platform as well and what they have in store. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Oh, and we also go through a poll that they did too. So let's get into this interview. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate. I have Vivek and Mike joining me on this episode to talk about their platform. That is looking at uh, more of the governance side of things in the Cardano ecosystem. This one is called Voltaire and it's pretty cool. I like it. It's open to anyone that's uh, got a wallet that can connect to the website in the Cardano ecosystem. And I'd love to dig a little bit deeper to learn and understand why this platform came about and how the community can use it. So Vivek, Mike, welcome to the Thanks podcast. Thanks for having us. Hi, great. Thanks for having us. It's wonderful. So let's get a really quick overview of your backgrounds and how you got into the Kadana space. So um, Vivek, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, talk a little bit about your background? Sure. Uh, so um, Vivek Mankasur and uh, early on we um, started a stake pool. That was our first sort of foray into Cardano. Uh, Mike and I got together and um, you know we had been watching Cardano since 2017. Uh, but when we did start, uh, start a stake pool uh, pretty early on, um, we uh, really fell in love with the community and fell in love with the overall ethos of uh, Cardano. It was uh, completely aligned with um, our personal values. And so um, at that point, we started to get more and more involved with uh, different aspects of uh, Cardano, including NFTs and including uh, starting to build, uh, you know, software-wise. And, um, and that's where we, uh, Mike and I, made the decision of, uh, saying, you know, let's get together, let's uh, build a company, and let's see what we can actually do um, from a uh, applying our histories and our background um, and in the ecosystem. My background is really data and analytics and um, uh, marketing technology, and we've been in consulting for probably about 15 plus years. So um, that's that's the background I bring to to the team. 
Brilliant. And uh, what about yourself? Mike? Yeah, so I've been uh, I've been developing software for probably about eighteen years. Um, I've worked with Vivek across a couple different uh, companies over the last uh, over ten years now, I think. Um, so yeah, I've been really interested in cryptocurrency since uh, since two thousand seventeen. Uh, like many people, uh, discovered Cardano via Charles's whiteboard video, uh, and really just fell in love and said, okay, this is you know the the one project that I feel good about uh, being involved in. Uh, and just spend a lot of time uh, learning about it over the next couple of years. Um, like Vivek said, when the Shelley hard fork came, we decided to get together, start a stake pool, um, just kind of threw ourselves in it. Um, and then after about a year uh, of that, we went full time uh, and just tried to build as much as we could on the uh, on the platform. Okay, so it's not your first uh, bear market uh, that you've experienced. Uh, I think this one's a lot worse than the last one since 2017, uh, but it is definitely exciting. And it's really cool that you guys have been around so long, started up the state pool when you have really part of the Cardano ecosystem. But let's talk about this platform that you guys built. So I saw this pop up on my Twitter feed. I can't remember when it was. It was a little while back and it was all around that pizza debate. Oh, I just have to say, pineapple, pineapple should belong on pizza. It's an okay condiment. It should exist. It's absolutely delicious. But you guys put out a poll on your platform. Let's talk about the platform and how it actually works and, and what it provides for the Kadana ecosystem. Sure. I mean, I could uh, I could start. I mean, I really, Voltaire all started with a conversation that we had with, uh, uh, you know, someone in the ecosystem um, that we've been working with for a while. So uh, he's the leader of the, the Wild Warriors NFT project. And, and we were talking about um, how can we get our community engaged uh, with our platform and help them make decisions uh, about our platform and about our project. And so he asked us to develop some way for his community to be able to vote on some issues. And we said, you know what, this is really something that the whole community needs, that DAOs need, and there's not a lot of tooling in the Cardano ecosystem. And the tooling that does exist and that people are developing, it's more developer tools, it's libraries, there's not anything that's very easy for an end user to just log in and create a ballot and, and get uh, people or um, you know communities to make decisions. So we decided to build a platform that really is easy for people to use and that anybody can use. Um, really, our our goals were ease of use and and inclusiveness. Um, Vivek, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, I think that that does a great job of providing the overview. Uh, like Mike said, we our focus is on on user uh, experience, right? We want to make it really easily um, accessible to most people. Uh, you know, regardless of your background in in crypto, and regardless of how much you know how to use wallets and things like that, we um, uh, we want to make it as easy as possible, and we want to make it accessible. So we want to open it up to, um, to anybody with a, a wallet, really, and then add that functionality that will help out people who have policy IDs or NFTs or fungible tokens where they can define their community that they're putting a ballot up for. Um, that was the real focus for it. Now we are running, uh, you know, infrastructure. So we're hoping to, uh, you know, down the road, uh, make sure that we can um, keep the project going. And so we have, uh, you know, monetization plans in there for, for those purposes. Um, but really it is to provide the community with those options. Right. Yeah. It's, I did have a play around with the platform just to see how it all worked. And I think the user experience is quite easy. Um, but can we just talk it through? I'll, I'll do a, an addition at the end of this. So anyone that lis is listening to this and watching this interview, if they just wait to the end, they can see my demo of going through it. But can we just talk through it at the moment, how that actually works? And then I want to go into those monetization plans afterwards and how you can keep this platform going. So can you talk about the user experience first? Essentially, right now, if you go to the platform, there's, uh, you know, there's two things you can do. You can look at the current ballots that are there um, and go in and, and vote on one of those. But if you wanted to create a ballot yourself, uh, there's three types of ballots right now. Uh, there's what we call a simple ballot, which is essentially uh, anyone uh, in the ecosystem that holds ADA can vote on it. And how much weight that your vote has, it depends on how much ADA is in your wallet. So it's very similar to like the, uh, the Catalyst vote uh, right now, how that works. 
Um, a second one is a is a pool uh, delegation style ballot. So you can give it a pool ID, and for that one, anyone who's delegated to a particular stake pool can vote on that ballot, and your vote weight depends on how much you have delegated that stake pool. So we figured that stake pool operators might want to make decisions, maybe about fees or you know. Do they want to split pools? You know, that's often a big, uh, a big uh, divisive um, decision in in the ecosystem. So they could put things like this to a vote for to their delegators. Um, and the final one is a policy ID type vote. So if you're a project leader of an NFT project or uh, a DeFi project that has a fungible token or just any um, any project that wa- that wants to uh, be like a DAO or or actual DAOs that don't have the the tooling yet, they can create a ballot. Uh, put in their policy ID, and then only holders of that policy ID can vote. And again, the weight of your vote will depend on how many of those tokens that you hold. That's so flexible. You've got a lot of different options there for anyone that wants to like create any sort exactly. of voting mechanism for their communities. Yeah, that that's really, really brilliant. Now, what, what about this monetization thing that you were talking about before? How, how are you going to keep this platform sustained? Yeah, so we have uh, a few... Uh, improvements and plans right now and right now we have uh, what we have funding for from catalyst um, to include escrow um, smart contracts as part of the platform and the way that would uh, ultimately work or the vision there is that uh, you can set up a vote and based on the outcome of that a vote uh, the uh, an amount of money that's locked up could be automatically distributed to a, a wallet right so that is um, what we would ultimately consider like advanced functionality for the platform. And as we build out more features and more advanced functionality, we will then, um, you know, people who actually are using it are going to be using it for projects that are likely um, better funded or well-funded. And so I think the monetization will be at like some sort of uh, premium tier uh, where we would uh, um, offer advanced functionality. Gotcha, gotcha. So for, the, for those uh, teams or DAOs or NFT projects even that have big communities, uh, large treasuries or whatever, and um, I'm just trying to think of a scenario like they may be voting on um, a contributor that is contributing to their ecosystem, writing up some really cool content or a storyline or artwork, whatever, and that vote has a, a value of some sort. If it gets passed, then they get paid that amount. So something like that. And I think that's really cool. Absolutely. I think one of the other um, cases that we've run into is uh, a DAO that, um, you know, they want consensus on what to invest in next for the DAO to increase in value, right? And so that's that's another big case where we can see that happening. And um, we've seen our people already use Voterra for that type of purpose. Now, in terms of a, a user that's coming to vote on the platform in one of the ballots, uh, what, what's it cost me to actually do a vote yeah so right now uh a ballot or when you vote that's essentially an internal transaction within your wallet so you're you're sending uh some small amount of ada to yourself so you do incur the transaction fee uh so right now that's about 0.17 ada or a few cents at uh at today's prices um, we are looking into uh, some different options to potentially uh, have no fee voting, like using signatures and whatnot. There are some other projects in the space that are uh, investing this, investigating this kind of thing um, as well. Uh, but right now, uh, the simple transaction uh, method works very well, and it also creates something that's very easy uh, for people uh, with the ability to look on chain to actually validate the results of their votes as well. Uh, some of the signature schemes are a little... Uh, more difficult for a lay user, for example, to um, uh, to verify that their vote was actually counted on chain. Yeah, I I, I do like that approach, but I, yeah, I get I guess if there's a hundred thousand users voting, that the, the, those fees add exactly. up a little bit. So, yeah. so uh, for for those yeah that kind of situation, you you may want uh, something else. But for smaller communities, you know, up to a thousand, couple of thousand, maybe even ten thousand, it's still um, a, a good voting mechanism. And like you said, everything's exactly. on chain. You can check, you can see your wallet, you can see your vote, which is really really cool. So what's the future development here. So you've got these smart contracts. Where, where are you going to see yourself in five years' time on this platform? It's an interesting question because five years uh, is 
a really tough you know uh, time period to to envision with uh, especially the speed at which things go in the crypto community as well as Cardano. Like we, if you asked us a year ago <laughs> if we would know what we were doing today, it'd be uh, <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> we have pivoted, pivoted a couple of times, um, but but to answer your question, let me, you know, future of Voter. Uh, we have a couple of things in, in mind. So we have the smart contracts that we're working on now. Uh, one of the next main things that we're going to be focusing on is integrating uh, uh, DIDs or um, decentralized IDs. Um, and that's for the purpose of uh, moving towards creating a, a way for us to do one person, one vote. Right, and so that more closely approximates the way people, you know, run elections now, for example. Right, um, so that's a, a, one of the ways we're going to move forward. And uh, on top of that, we have some other, you know, um, functions that we're going to be adding. Example is multiple policy IDs. I think that's going to be coming in the near future. Um, we have a backlog. A lot of a lot of um, people in our community, which has been great, have been providing a lot of feedback on actually using the platform. And so we have a, a very good list of, um, uh, you know, suggestions and uh, potential improvements. Um, but we'll see how DAOs evolve. We'll see how the communities evolve. And that will likely dictate um, the need in the ecosystem for the future of voting on chain. Yeah, one of the other items that I've been thinking about a lot, although this might be a future Catalyst proposal, I don't know that we have a need for it yet or the technology is mature enough, but in terms of your question around uh, fee-less or, or very low uh, fee voting, uh, I've been looking a lot into Hydra and, and looking to see how that technology um, advances and, and when it might be mature enough to actually look at doing some of these uh, voting transactions in a, a Hydra channel, uh, so on kind of a layer two uh, very high speed and uh, and lightweight. Very cool future for the governance layer on Cardano, and I love what you guys are building. Uh, where can we go to find out more information? Is uh, do you have like a Discord community, Telegram, or anything like that? Uh, obviously, the website as well. But can you give us all the links and uh, where we should go uh, to concentrate and and talk to you guys the most? Yeah, I think the best way is at the bottom of our homepage. We have our link to our Discord. Uh, I think that's probably the uh, best way to get in contact. Um, but we also have our Twitter. We have uh, email. All of those channels are are uh, we're watching all of them at all the time. Uh, all the time. So I'll, I'll make sure I'll put all the links to it in the show notes so everyone can have access to them as well. And depending on when this goes out, if you have a look at the Voltaire website, you'll be able to see a ballot that is up there as well around uh, me apparently doing an apology video for desecrating pizzas with pineapple. But, you know, we'll see how that vote goes. I, I think the vote counts a little bit low at the moment, and I may be able to sway some people so I don't have to do that apology video. But we'll see awesome. how it goes. Well, I'll vote for you. I'm I'm Please. on the pineapple on pizza uh, side of the vote. So yes, I'm with you there. I am. Yeah, great. I am not. I am on the other side. So <laughs> I, will, I will cast my vote as well. <laughs> But do you want this interview to go out? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brilliant, guys. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll talk awesome. again real Thanks soon. so much for having us. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, I'll just pull up that uh, that poll, that pizza poll that they were talking about. Uh, if I have to do an apology video now, it was back in December. So let me just find this here. December last year, 2022. There it is. Should Pete create a video apologizing for eating pineapple on on pizza let's view the results and we have a no there is nothing wrong with pineapple pizza i will not be doing an apology video of any sort that's really good to know uh, we had nine votes on that one and of course you can always throw up another vote and play around with the platform and uh, you know I'll, I'll probably have to agree to this first but you know we'll we'll, we'll see anyway um, if you enjoyed this podcast episode please consider giving me that thumbs up click subscribe click the notification bell and i'll see you in the next video yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast Gotta get it hype, crypto is what we like But this is not investment or financial advice Gotta do your research, cause it's risky, we know it is This show is educational and it's informative Crypto's the future, really it ain't no debate